Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be discussing books which I've used during medical school. I will also tell you why I did not use books that much when studying to become a doctor and what resources are available for you guys online free of charge which actually help me pass my exams without the utilization of textbooks. As we enter medical school, and as we well know, medical school is divided into the first pre-clinical years and the final clinical years. The subjects you're going to study in the pre-clinical versus the clinical years are going to be slightly different. The clinical years focus mostly on the clinical skills, on examination of patients and being on the wards, whilst the pre-clinical years will focus mostly on the core science subjects such as biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, neurology and pathology. As you transition from your pre-clinical to your clinical years, the choice of books will also vary. During my five years in medical school, I actually only utilized five physical books, whilst the rest of the books were mostly online in the format of PDFs and I also used various websites which I will be guiding you in this video. What books are the most common books used by medical students while studying for exams? As you well know, both the UK programs and the US programs tend to utilize a variety of core books in order to teach their medical students. In the pre-clinical years, the most common books that are used for the teaching of medical students when it comes to anatomy and physiology include Gray's Anatomy and Guided. So when it comes to Gray's Anatomy, the good thing of Gray's Anatomy is the layout it has, the pictures it uses in order to teach the anatomical variations and the anatomical skills needed for the pre-clinical years and also the easy to read information. Another good thing, another good point about this book is that it gives you case studies. With every anatomical section you go through, you're going to receive case studies with regards, for example, spinal pain or, for example, with the brain strokes injuries etc. The book although it's quite thick is easy to understand and therefore you can read a couple of chapters in a week. I think it's really good for students because the pictures are quite easy to understand. A tip I, I would give when using this book is that you try to draw the structures you're you're studying over here. For example if you look at the pelvis over here. Drawing out the structure of the pelvis can help you remember the most common anatomical areas of that pelvis. My technique of studying was basically um, uh, drawing and art and drawing in my opinion is the, one of the easiest ways for you to remember something so complex as, an, as the anatomical part of the body. The way they also write the anatomical uh, explanations is very simple to read and easy to learn because there's more picture than text. Another book I would recommend for you pre-clinical medical students is Guyton's Physiology. Guyton's Physiology basically is a book on physiology and again, although it's a really thick physiology book, it's quite easy to understand because it goes into all the details and all the mechanisms involved in the physiology of the body. For example, the production of acid by the gastric cells or the physiology of muscle contracture or the physiology of inflammation. Although it might be quite long, I think knowing all the details and knowing the way the mechanism actually works in a simple but more elongated form gives you a better understanding of the physiology rather than reading bullet points from notes. I personally used to do that in pharmacy school. I used to take down a lot of notes during the lectures. However, without knowing the actual way, without knowing the actual mechanism, just having notes for the sake of having notes or bullet points or, uh, or a bunch of uh, small snippets is not enough for you guys to understand the actual mechanism of what's really going on. I think Guyton is a great book because it explains the, the physiology of the body in great detail, but also in a simplistic type of language. When it comes to the pre-clinical years, I think those are the bulk of the books I used for the pre-clinical scenarios, for the pre-clinical examinations, where most of the examinations I carried out were multiple choice questions. When it comes to the clinical years, things get a bit more complicated. You start 
to rotate, you start to follow various specialities like surgery, like medicine, like orthopedics and gynecology and therefore you must utilize a variety of resources for each specialty you are following. When it comes to, for example, medicine and surgery, the most common book used in Malta and the UK is the Oxford Handbook of Medicine. The Oxford Handbook of Medicine is a basically a small book, a pocket-sized book, easy to carry around, especially when you're doing rotations. It is designed to be taken with you on the hospital wards. This book right here has been used for like, I think, five years or more. I got it secondhand on Amazon UK. Therefore, I, I got a used one, which was around maybe eight euros, um, which is around nine pound British. It's a book I recommend because it has all the examinations in it. It gives you also the blood levels in the front page. It has a section on ECG interpretation, the most common ECGs you guys are going to have on the wards and when you're junior doctors. Me being a currently a junior doctor, I also carry this book with me in my bag. It's still useful for me as a doctor and I refer to it whenever I have a difficult case and I'm on call. This book basically covers all the material you guys are going to need for your medicine exams, for both your third year exams and your fifth year exams, and also for your surgery exams. Now, surgery, as we well know, is divided into subspecialities like general surgery, gastric surgery, and orthopedics or neurosurgery in the case of those more specific forms of uh, of clinical me of clinical surgery or clinical medicine i basically used to use mostly online resources for example orthobullets.com i also used to use uh, for the clinical aspects of medicine um, amboss.com which i'm giving you the link right here i also used to utilize websites for example for ecg interpretation which I also still use till this day and age. Uh, Life in the Fast Lane for ECG interpretation. I really recommend this website and I hope you guys really follow it. And also Teach Me Surgery, Teach Me Medicine and Teach Me Anatomy Series. These are online free websites where you can go and they have basically the main points for you guys studying medicine, surgery, gynecology as well and uh, anatomy. They are free resources, they're online and go ahead and use them. However, when it comes to medicine, I think AMBOSS is one of the best websites out there for medical students because it does not only give you a database of cases and of clinical scenarios you can go through, but it also gives you an easy to search tool where you can go and search for a condition, for example, hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, chest pains, and basically AMBOS gives you the way you're going to go over the investigations, the differential diagnosis and the treatment, and also the symptomatology of that particular disease. Other books I used for my clinical years included Churchill's, Surgery, Churchill's Surgery, it's a pocket book as well. It's an easy to understand book. It goes to the major surgeries, for example, surgeries involving the pancreas, the gastric system, the colon, uh, the rectum, the rectal cancers, rectal carcinoma, adenocarcinomas, etc. It's very easy to understand. The words are quite easy, quite straightforward and it goes through the investigation, diagnosis and treatment. Other books are used for my clinical years also included Impies for Gynecology. This book is another easy to read book. It goes through the major points for your gynecology finals and your gynecological exams or OSCEs. Therefore, I highly recommend reading this book. This really helped me a lot. This book was written by Lawrence Impey and it's a great read for you guys on your gynecology rotations. When it comes to neurology, I basically used the OHCM and when it comes to pathology I used a book called Patoma. Patoma is a great read. Using basically Patoma helped me understand pathology which is an incredibly complex subject to learn especially in the third years. In here in Malta we do pathology in our third year and going through for example the kidney pathology 
understanding the causes of glomerular nephritis and the types of histological changes seen in the kidney was really, in my opinion, easily explained in Patoma and therefore I highly recommend this book. Although I don't have the physical book, I have the book stored on my PC as a PDF. Other resources I used for studying during my clinical years included common channels on YouTube like, for example, Oasis. Oasis gives you a variety of medical subjects that are studied during medical school but in an easy, cartoonish way. It's slow-paced and easily laid out and therefore I found it really helpful and easy to understand. For my OSCEs, the most important resource, website and YouTube channel which I used to watch day and night, every single day, is basically Geeky Medics. Geeky Medics is the most, one of the most important resources that actually saved my life as a medical student and now I also use it as a junior doctor. Actually, I was checking out um, Geeky Medics last time to freshen up my mind on how to do an MMSC and how to do a venous cannulation because sometimes even as junior doctors we tend to forget what we studied and it's totally normal. So yeah, check out Geeky Medics. This resource is extremely, extremely important for you guys, especially when you're going to sit your medical findings. Um, that's it basically. I think books, although are really important and some of you guys might prefer a more physical thing to study compared to a PDF or to a website, that's quite fine. I think that in this day and age there are a variety of resources online, such as various websites which I pointed out to you before, such as various YouTube channels you can watch, and also various sites where you can literally download the books for free in PDF formats and store them on your PC. And that saves you a ton of money, especially medical books are extremely expensive. They are a very expensive resource. So, bye guys. Thank you for watching my video. Hope this video was informative for you guys. See you next time. Subscribe to my channel, please. And uh, cheers. And have a good night. Thank you.